What up guys and buenos dias, here is Boris the Russian. Hey. In the summer of 2020, people have started going crazy and kneeling for black people as the sign of solidarity against racism. And that began after an African-American was killed by white police officers in Minneapolis. The hashtag Black Lives Matter spread like wildfire on social networks. US Congress named white Europeans the indigenous people of the USA and called for the people to apologize to black people. Meanwhile, they've forgotten about Indians, the true natives of North America. In this overview, we will show you who the indigenous nations were and give you the examples of tribes that have survived to this day. Indian lives matter. Here we go. Where did Indians live? Let's take a look at a map of the modern USA. Let's have a look at some photos and some pictures of the indigenous people of the USA, how they looked, how they lived and how they fought for their land. In this video, we will only look at the most dangerous Indian tribes. They could prove a worthy adversary to Europeans despite the Europeans conquered them in the final battle. The northern territories that these tribes inhabited were much like the peoples of Russia's far northern reaches. The Nantes, Nancy's, Evenkis, Kanti, Mansi, Chukchis, and Eskimo. They are distinguished by their appearance and their eye shape. An Alaskan inhabitant in traditional grab, 1912. A Swilovic tribesman in northern Alaska, 1929. Male hunter wearing a fur hood, Alaska, 1912. The traditional teepee that everyone is familiar with looks exactly the same as yours in the Russian far north. Northern Indian tribes prepare both for their environment and any strangers that they may encounter. Most often, they dressed in moose fur or a buffalo hide robe, attentively monitoring their weapons and carrying an RF carrier. In the central and southern North American continent, Indian tribes domesticated horses wore large hats dressed made out of feathers and looked different from their northern cousins. The tribes of hunters and gatherers used bows and arrows for a long time as their, as their main weaponry, while they integrated horses as the means of transport. After it was brought to their daily lives thanks to European invaders, a little bit after they began trading guns to them in exchange for food. Left. A girl from the Apache tribe, right, a man with a traditional hairstyle. This photo was taken in 1906. The materials were obtained from the US Library of Congress. Southern tribes have their own traditions and customs. They walked around with their torso bare, wore tattoos and decorated their bodies in different colors. These tribes are most typical in Central and South America. For example, take the residents of the Mexican state Yucatan who still look that way and possess similar traditions. In this photo, a Hidatsa tribe woman and a girl from the Taos tribe, year 1908. The tribal chief went by the name Yellow Bull and the girl is a Hopi, 1905. A brilliant portrayal of Indian life was filmed in 2006. The Australian-American actor and film director Mel Gibson presented to the world a shocking, beautiful and realistic film Apocalyptico which showed the life of warring American Indian tribes. We recommend it as a good watch, if you're interested in this topic and would like to learn more. The film shows very beautiful images of Indians, the weapons they used, and the way they lived. The movie is full of gruesome scenes of ritual murders, executions, and chopped off heads that will make viewers' stomach turn. While the movie was out for rent in certain countries, the scene in which a herd is ripping out of a living person was cut out of the original. Furthermore, the film shows the beautiful love story of the main character and his beautiful wife, who fought for the life of her child. Western peoples, Shoshones, Vashos, Nipurses, etc. For instance, the Shoshones are a group of Indian tribes that lived in the western sections of the Great Basin in the north and the east in the modern-day states of Idaho and Wyoming, where they engaged in hunting and gathering. The Shoshones are of particular interest to ethnographers since they were involved in gathering wild rice harvests, 
which some researchers consider a stage preceding the practice of agriculture and thus it can be looked as a model illustrating our ancestors' transition to efficient farming. By the year 1500, some Indians crossed the Rocky Mountains from the west and reached the Great Plains. As more and more European settlers migrated to the west, tensions grew in their relations with native peoples due to the, to the competition for the territory and resources. This paved the way for wars that went on over the course for the last 19th century. Among the people who were perished were many women and children who were deliberately killed by American soldiers. Now let's have a look at the Indians in the eastern reaches of the North American continent, such as Kikapus, Mohawks, Creeks, Cherokees, and so on. Europeans considered the eastern tribes uh, who lived on the reservations some of the most civilized and well assimilating. They really tried to live as good Indians. They learned English, they mastered agriculture, herded cattle, and briefly put, were absolutely peaceful people. However, when the Civil War began, the Kikapu tribe feared sending their men to fight for the Confederacy and decided to emigrate to live with their cousins in Mexico. When they approached Texas, Scots warned the commander of the U.S. Army that those nomadic people traveling to Mexico were not Comanches, but friendly and absolutely peaceful Kikapus, whom previously even the most prejudiced racists couldn't have accused for attacking whites. But the commander responded that in his understanding, Indians were, by definition, belligerent, and he offered them to attack the camp. They, uh, the attack was led in the best traditions of Texas quasi-military idiots, in uncoordinated fashion, without planning or in unison. The Kikapu tried to address um, Texans several times in good English, but they killed all of those truce envoys. Those violent clashes were one-sided. What happened to the Indians and where are they now? First, let's discuss the population of Indians in the United States. So, how many of them are left in aftermath of the wars between Indians and European colonists? The population of Indians in the United States today is 2.5 million full-blooded Indians. But in the modern United States, the cutoff for being considered Indian is someone who had at least one Indian parent. So, the official number of aborigines in the, in the USA is 5 million. That is 1.5% of the total, populations, uh, total population of the USA, which, uh, which number to 327 million people. Indians are the true inhabitants of the North American continent. However, they only received their rights in 1924, when President Calvin Coolidge signed the law to give Indians US citizenship. Imagine what a treat it would be to receive the citizenship of a newly fledged country on the land you spent your whole life on, where your family and ancestors sp uh, spent their lives and only after recently arrived pale-skinned settlers. Not a lot of people are aware that the term redskin first caught on among British colonists who settled New England. They lived alongside the now extinct Beofax tribe whose warriors colored their bodies with ochre. Consequently, the word redskin acquired a racist undertone which set Indians apart from Europeans, Africans, and Asians. Meanwhile, this is what Indians looked like when the Europeans encountered them. All Indians that remained after the continent was conquered were settled into so-called reservations, designated landlords far from cities and economic centers, so they couldn't eke out a scanty living before their eyes, and so that apparently arriving Europeans could set aside their feeling of guilt. The largest Indian tribes today are Cherokees, about 310,000, Navajos, about 280,000, Sioux, ab about 115,000, and Chippewas, 113,000. Today, Indian tribes in the form of reservations control about 2% of the territory of the United States. Meanwhile, the area of some reservations is not more than 4 square kilometers, just a patch of land. But that doesn't mean that Indians aren't allowed to leave uh, their reservations and they are held there by force. Because most Indians live in large cities, working as lawyers, teachers, doctors, artists, professional athletes, and even astronauts. The states with the largest Indian populations are California, about 740,000, Oklahoma, about 415,000, and Arizona, 366,000. Reservations are sovereign Indian territories in the United States, which are controlled by a tribal government in cooperation with the Federal Bureau of Indian Affairs.
a section of, uh, of the Department um, of the Interior. Reservations are not subject to the uh, jurisdiction of the state, the territory of which they reside on. Reservations have their own courts, police, legislatures, um, and complete autonomy in their internal affairs. Essentially, reservations and tribes hold the same administrative hierarchical level and um, retain the same rights that individual states do. Tribe members um, on the territory of the reservations are free from having to pay income tax, property tax, as well as state taxes. Currently, reservations um, serve um, the purpose of preserving the cultural independence of tribes and guarantee that their traditional way of life will be maintained. In addition to reservations, Indians have numerous uh, benefits available to them, such as free education. Many more Indians abuse alcohol and tobacco per capita than the USA as a whole, something they have in common with indigenous people of Russia's far north. It's a curious fact that people living on the territories with insufficient sun are most prone to alcohol addiction. The most interesting fact that they drink at the government's expense, a pastime which apparently displays the preservation of their traditional lifestyle. For instance, Pine Ridge, as a social hell outreach on Earth, could be a superb location for fallout of zombie apocalypse games. To be more precise, Pine Ridge is the Indian reservation of the Oglala tribe located in the southwestern region of the state of South Dakota, the USA. The absolute majority of Oglala Indians that lived in the reservations are unemployed chronic alcoholics. The reservation breaks records at the bottom of the ranking for the life expectancy and based on the income, the suicide rate, and infant morality in the USA. It's apparent that the Oglala Indians are natural born leaders. That was a sarcasm. The life expectancy in Pine Ridge is about 50 years old. Based on that figure, the reservation outlives Niger, Afghanistan, and Somalia. The median household income there is about $2,576 a month the lowest in the US. The proud Indians sink almost all of their money into wine, beer, and women. There are no stores on the reservation. There is nothing but the smell of liquor and drunken bodies. Undoubtedly, the USA bears complete responsibility for the nightmare being created in Pine Ridge. But sometimes it seems that the only solution is to change Pine Ridge's status from reservations to a federal narcological dispensary. Nevertheless, there are people who show that even hell can be escaped if you have the spirit of a true Lakota. Ola Mildred Rexroth, who went by the nickname Sexy Rexy, served as an example that one can find their way out of any kind of hell. She was a Glala on her mother's side and she spent her childhood in Pine Ridge. But she got an education and from the age of 40 to 50, she served as a US Air Force captain. William Mervyn Miles was born in, in Pine Ridge and became an Olympic champion. He was one of the only Americans to receive a gold medal for 10,000 meters competition in the Tokyo Olympics in 1964. There are examples of particularly more advanced reservations which didn't give up on development and whose victims were victimized by alcoholism, tobacco and drugs. For instance, the Seminoles Reservation in Florida. The population of Seminoles is currently 14,080 pure-blooded Seminoles and 31,971 Mesistos. In other words, the populations of Seminoles is compatible to populations of Chukches in Russia, 15,907 as of 2010. The Florida Seminole tribe is a very beautiful site. It's the only tribe in America that never signed a peace agreement. This tribe is famous for its businesses empire. The tribe owns a chain of casinos and hotels in Florida. Another businesses empire complex has formed Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino Hollywood with a value of $1.5 billion. The cost of the Zenith Arena, which attracted particular attention, is worth just $700 million. The Lachta Center in St. Petersburg Russia, by comparison, has estimated value of $1.77 The complex uh, features a Hard Rock Live concert hall with a capacity of 6,500 guests, another hotel um, tower with 167 rooms, and the pool view over the neighborhood. Rock Spa with the area of 3,900 square meters and over 20 new restaurants and nightclubs. 
The hotel features a concert hall with an um, 11,000 square meters area, including a 3,500 square meters exhibition hall. By the end of 2019, over 1,200 hotel rooms will become available. In conclusion, I have to say that some people say that the remaining um, representatives of powerful tribes of old are few and far between crammed into tiny reservations, lead an unfortunate life and gradually are dying out. Many people say that reservations are a travesty for any 21st century country and they must be immediately absolved and Indians return to their lands. Some uh, even compare the situation modern Indians live into the Jewish ghettos under the Third Reich, looking back on the sterilization of Indian women in 1970s. Still others say that they are bathing in luxury in receiving the major financial compensations, grants and benefits uh, they get from federal government. All the casino money they make um, and the resources they have. Which of this argument is correct? Write your answers and thoughts in the comment section under this video. It's sad to admit, but all civilizations endure tragedies such as genocide, territories lost in the aftermath of war, and the eradication of their native population. All modern preserved empires exhibit such signs as well, in particular the USA, the British Empire, and the Russian Empire. Both in world history books and US history textbooks, particularly nothing has been said about this fact. All that is discussed is that such tribes existed and then they uh, gradually gave up their lands and disappeared into history. Those were distinct cultures and ethnic, with their own traditions and cultures. They had their own music, writing style and customs. All of that has declined into a life characterized by lead, gun, smoke and alcohol. In his movie, Mel Gibson vividly portrayed the ships that colonizers rode across the ocean on the Northern American lands. In the final scene, uh, we see wooden sailing schooners and people rowing on three rowboats. Take a look at the rowboat on the right with a Catholic clergyman holding gunpowder on it. We don't regret the colonizers' bloody actions as fueled by the spirit Catholicism in this video but hundreds of thousands of resisting Indians were killed for refusing to be baptized. It's shameful to admit that this is a process that took place in Russia, and it was called the baptism of Rus, of which so little is said in Russian history books. In light of current history, in the fight against racism in 2020, it's unsettling to remember the fact that nobody gets on their knees for, for those people who lived in the USA before white invaders arrived. Since the true number of Indians that were killed when Europeans seized the northern, uh, North American continent still remains unknown, due to the fact that the total population of Indians remain a dark secret for Americans who migrated over, and Native American Indians is the subject of lengthy historical debate. That tragic note is where we will have to end our overview. Don't forget to like this video and to click the bell to make sure you don't miss the next one. And tell your friends about the channel if you enjoy our content. And I'll see you guys later.